scared to use the Instapot? Have you even opened the box yet? Well, don't fear. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to get started. Coming up next on Gourmet Done Skinny. Let's get cooking. I'm Amy Lawrence. Welcome to Gourmet Done Skinny. This is where I show you how to lighten up recipes, master your weight, and live freely. And today I'm going to show you how to use the Instapot. So many people I talk to are afraid to use the Instapot. They think it's going to blow up on them. Well, relax. It's not going to blow up on you. It has a few safety features, which I'm going to explain in a minute. And as long as you follow a few basic rules, you will be fine. Now the two models I have, actually I have three and I'll explain why in a minute. I have an eight quart Instapot and uh, two six quart Instapots. Um, the six quart is probably the best for most people. Um, it's a great pot for a family of four. They do have a three quart Instapot, but the, the six quart is probably, if you haven't bought one yet, the six quart is probably your best bet. Now, if you have big eaters at home, I have two boys and one is actually a firefighter. Um, part-time and so I need to make lots of food and I need lots of leftovers so the eight quart works best for me now my first instapot I actually bought about four years ago and it's been great it works great it still works great however online I've seen a lot of people have questions about the new instapot they don't know how to use the buttons and in the manual it doesn't explain it so I thought you know it might be time to upgrade so I could see what everybody's talking about um, I love the new one wow I can't believe all the new features it's great but my trusty old one works really well. So what's so special about the Instapot? Well, it can replace quite a few appliances in your kitchen. It's an electric pressure cooker. It's a slow cooker or a crock pot. It's a rice cooker. It's a soup cooker. Um, some of them can do sous vide. Some of them can make yogurt. Um, some of them can bake. It all kind of depends on the um, the exact Instapot that you buy. Really, the only ones that I really use it for is the pressure cooker. That's like the number one thing I love to use my Instapot for. Um, I do use it occasionally as a slow cooker and occasionally as a rice cooker. But for me, the pressure cooker is the best thing about it. And what's so special about a pressure cooker? Well, it cooks things a lot faster. So meats become really super tender in a short amount of time. It makes it taste, makes the food taste like you've been cooking it all day on the stove. Um, beans and lentils cook super fast. Um, I've even cooked a turkey in it, um, which only took 30 minutes. Now, a lot of the recipes that you will see online, um, you may see it'll say 30 minutes for the Instapot. That is for the actual cooking time. It does take time for the Instapot to come up to pressure. So you need to make sure you include that. Soups tend to take a lot longer than um, meats um, because there's more liquid in there. But um, that's one thing you need to remember. It, just because the recipe says it's gonna take 30 minutes, it may take a little bit longer depending on how long it takes to come to pressure. The Instapot also has some safety features. It has an anti-blockage vent. So in the old models, this comes off just like this. In the new models, it looks like this and nothing comes off. You don't have to do anything to it. So it prevents it from overflowing. Um, it also has lid detection. So if the lid isn't sitting on the pot correctly, the pot won't seal and it won't come to pressure. Um, the, the countdown won't begin. So you will know when the lid's on there. And most of the models will say lid error or something to that effect. Now there are only a few rules that you need to follow when you use the Instapot. First of all, you wanna put your food in the liner. This is the liner. Do not put your food in here. I know it may sound silly, but I've actually had people who have put the food in here. So use the liner. For most recipes, you don't wanna fill the Instapot more than two thirds full. In the newer models, it actually says two thirds. In the older models, it doesn't. Um, and if you're making rice, beans, or legumes, then you don't wanna fill it more than half full, which in the new model, it says half full, so you know the difference. Um, those foods, the beans, legumes, and lentils, um, they tend to expand when they cook, and so that's why you need to give um, the food a little bit more room. When you're using the Instapot and you're ready to release the pressure, which we'll talk about how to do all this in just a minute, you definitely wanna use a hot pad on the older models. On the newer models, it actually has a little button and you just push the button and it and it um, the pressure comes out so I wanted to show you a little bit about the differences in the two pots this one is the ultra pot 
the Instapot Ultra. And so you don't have to do anything with the knob when you're making a recipe that requires pressurizing. Um, when you're ready, the, here's the little button, and when the button comes up, the uh, Instapot comes to pressure. It does the countdown just like the other one. Um, and then when you're ready to release the steam, on this one you just push this button right here, okay? Now on the old pot, the older style model, it looks like this, and you put the vent to sealing if you're doing a, a pressurized recipe. Um, and then when you're ready, and then the little button will come up, and then when you're ready to release the pressure, this is the one that you need the hot pad, and you turn the knob to sealing, and then the, the steam will shoot out. So that's the two differences in the pot. Um, just wanted to let you know so you can see the difference. They are quite a bit different. All right, I'm gonna show you how to do a quick water test. This is something that you can do at home without using food, just to kind of practice using your Instapot so you're not scared of it. I'm gonna put three cups of water in the Instapot, just like that. I'm gonna take the lid, I'm gonna check the seal, make sure it's going all the way around and it's in the little track, which it is. I'm going to turn it around this way so I can see it. And I'm going to put my lid on and turn it. And I'm going to, on the old model, I'm going to put it to sealing. So it, when it's all the way up, then it's sealing. Then I'm going to push manual. Or actually on this one, I think I'll just do steam. Oh wait, we've got to plug it in here first. So I'll plug it in. Um, some models have... Um, on and off switches and some don't. This is the old model, so it doesn't. So I'm going to push steam, and then I'm going to adjust the time with the little minus sign down to three minutes. And that's it, you don't have to push start or anything. On this model, I've already put the water in here. You don't need to mess with the seal, the, the knob, turn it to sealing or anything, because this is a newer model. Uh, this is the Instapot Ultra, I believe. And um, so you don't need to do anything. It's automatically sealed. If for, if for some reason you're making a recipe and you don't want it sealed, then you would use the, you would press this button. It says it on the top, press, and that would make the, um, the, the knob open, and so it would be vented. All right, so now we're gonna switch the program. So we're choosing, and you turn the knob to get to the program that you want. And we want steam. So we do steam, and then you push the button. Okay, then you choose the time and you push the button again and then I push three and I push the button again and if I would want to change the high or the low then you would push the button again. It's basically if you're having trouble with it, push the button and turn the dial. That's kind of, and it kind of selects it. It is a little confusing compared to the old models um, but once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad. So I push the three, and um, then you push start. On this one, you have to actually push start. On the old models, you don't. Um, and that's it, and we'll be back, and I'll show you how to release the pressure in just a minute. One thing that's nice about the new models is it tells you what stage of cooking that the Instapot is in. So right now, it says it's in um, preheating, and it, then eventually it'll get into cook. And it's just kind of nice. The other one, the other old styles don't tell you that. I thought I would take the time to go over a few extra little things. So you can buy extra seals for your Instapot. If you find your pot isn't sealing, your seal may be too old. You don't want to put your silicon um, uh, seals in the dishwasher, it, it wears them out too fast. It's nice to have different colors. So like maybe black could be for savory and this one could be for sweet. Um, because these uh, seals do actually pick up some smell and it's hard to get it out. You, actually, you can't really get it out. But like if you're doing Indian spices, um, it'll smell like Indian. If you're, if you're doing a roast, it's fine, no problem. But if you're doing a rice or some kind of dessert, then you would want to use a different um, seal for that. But it's nice that you can buy extra ones. I just get them on Amazon. All right, this one's done. So when the Instapot beeps like this and it's finished and the countdown is done, if you are doing a recipe such as a meat, um, something that you want to leave it in there a little bit, it's called a natural release. There's a little button that pops up when, when it comes to pressure. And um, so what you do is for a natural release, you just wait. You leave it the way it is exactly. 
and eventually the button will come down and that's considered a natural release. So if you see a recipe that says natural release, you wait till the button comes down and then you open it. Sometimes you'll see a recipe that says natural release 10 minutes. So what you would do is wait until the timer goes to 10, it'll, it'll start counting, and um, when it's at 10 minutes, then you can um, release the pressure. And so I'm gonna show you how to release the pressure. On the old models, you wanna use a hot pad and you just turn the knob to venting. Um, if you have pets, it does scare them. My cats are used to it by now because I use the Instapot all the time. But you just do that, and that's how it vents. Sometimes the steam can take quite a bit of time to release, depending on what's in there. So it may take a little bit, but just wait. When the button falls down, then you can um, open the lid up. All right, now this one is done. For the newer models, you don't really need a hot pad because you just push the button that says press, Oops. and you just hold it down, and it releases the pressure. This one does it actually pretty fast. And eventually you can take your finger off the button. Um, just be careful not to be right in the, um, the midst of the steam. All right, the little button went down, we're all ready. And we can open it up, just like that. So I want to show you a couple other features about the Instapot. On the um, Instapot, it has a saute button. And like I said before, that's one of my favorite features about it. So what you would do is you'd push saute. And on some models, if you push adjust, it adjusts the temperature of the, um, of the saute. So if you wanted to say brown onions on a higher temperature setting, you would push adjust and to more and then it, it would um, make it hotter or if you didn't want to brown it so fast or so hot then you keep pushing adjust until it goes to less. So a few concerns that people have about the Instapot sometimes. Um, sometimes the Instapot doesn't come, the little button doesn't pop up and it, the program won't start because it's not coming to pressure for some reason. The first thing I do when that happens, I take my hands and I just squeeze the two handles together. A lot of times that's enough to make that little button come up and that's all you have to do. Now, sometimes that doesn't work. And when that doesn't work, then what you wanna do is take off the, I'll just grab this one, take off the lid and um, make sure that the seal is really good around the, um, the little rim here because a lot of times that can be the problem. Those seem to be the two most common um, issues that people have. Um, another thing that people have sometimes is after they've cooked it, they've released the pressure, they checked it with the thermometer, and it's not done. Now what? So all you do, it's not hard, just put the lid back on and put the pressure on for maybe a couple more minutes, depending on if it's like really raw or if it's almost cooked. Put, the, put it on for just a few more minutes and and normally that'll take care of it. If it's just like barely in there and you've got enough steam, sometimes I don't even, I'll just do maybe a minute and um, put the lid back on and do it for a minute. Um, but there's no harm in opening it up and checking it. You do have to wait for the, for the steam to be released. It takes some time, but it, it doesn't take it long to come back up to pressure if you have to put the lid back on it and cook it a little bit more. I hope these little tips have helped you today and I hope they've motivated you to get started on your Instapot. It's really not scary. Once you start using it, you're absolutely gonna love it, I promise. It makes my life so much easier. Things cook super fast and it's all done in one pot and there's not a lot of mess. Um, even the newer models actually have delay, which I'm very excited. I haven't used that um, button on my, uh, in on my new Instapot yet, but that's very exciting. Um, so try out the Instapot and let me know what you think. I have quite a few recipes um, on my website about the Instapot. Check out my Instapot pork chop video, and that way you can see the pot in action. <laughs>